Thank you very much, Minister Charlebois. This is the part of the conference that I like the best because this is the part of the conference where we celebrate the leadership of some of our own family within this wonderful and vibrant community. This is when we give out the awards that Harm Reduction International gives out every conference for the last 20 years. Um, three different awards, um, the Carol and Travis Jenkins Award for Outstanding Contributions to Drug User Activism, the International Rolleston Award for Outstanding International Contributions to Harm Reduction, and the National Rolleston Award for Outstanding National Contributions to Harm Reduction. And I'd like to begin with the Carol and Travis Jenkins Award. This award is decided by the Board of Directors of HRI along with the three previous winners of the Carol and Travis Jenkins Award over the three previous years. And it's my great honor and privilege to give this year's award uh, for outstanding contributions uh, to activism amongst people who use drugs to Lee Hurtle. Lee, <laughs> Lee has been engaged actively with harm reduction for more than a decade and has been an advocate and activist providing peer-to-peer -peer interventions in Minnesota. He established Lee's Rig Hub in 2012 as a means of helping to prevent bloodborne viruses. Lee's Rig Hub offers street-based needle and syringe programs and other harm reduction interventions including naloxone training materials and others related to overdose prevention, safer drug use, and safer sex. As a collective, Lee's Rig Hub operates out of Lee's apartment in downtown Minneapolis. It works in the streets, in places where people inject, goes on rides with drug suppliers, anywhere that he and his peers can achieve maximum coverage to have real effect, perceptible change. Within the state of Minnesota, Lee is a voice of people who use drugs, acting as a liaison point between his peers and the Department of Health. The presence of Lee's Rig Hub has been an essential case of providing services to many of those who are most re marginalized and hardest to reach, frequently too also particularly stigmatized. So Lee has been an outstanding contributor in his community, he's been an outstanding contributor to the International Harm Reduction Conference and is one of the major reasons why we have so much naloxone to give out to our attendees at the conference this week. <laughs> And I think I'll leave it best with a couple of the vignettes that were submitted in support of Lee's application by some of his peers, one of whom said, Lee for many years has been one of the only places that me and my friends have been able to get clean injecting supplies from. He's always done his absolute best to keep everyone safe and has supplied Narcan to wake up an has supplied enough Narcan to wake up an army of elephants. <laughs> I've saved at least 25 people myself through these means. Another one said, he's an outspoken, fierce advocate for getting the life-saving drug naloxone into the hands of people who need it most. He engages and educates. He has credibility. He has served significantly to reduce the soaring overdose rates in Minnesota. I'd like to give to you Lee Hurtle. Thank you. One moment here. <laughs> Bear with me, I'm very nervous. <laughs> thank you to the HRI, HRI board. Thank you so much for this distinguished honor. I'm very humbled to have been selected, but I'm also very proud to be the recipient of the 2017 Carolyn Travis Jenkins Award and to be counted among past recipients many of whom I look up to as well as look to for guidance, insight, and support. I've given a great deal of thought to the theme of HRI 17 at the heart of the response. What does it mean? What does it signify? To do something with heart is to act in love, but it also is to do something with courage, conviction, and bravery. Coming out as a person who uses drugs is no less frightening than it is to come out as gay. It takes courage standing up to argue, advocate, and fight for the rights, dignity, and self-determination 
of our brothers and sisters around the world takes courage. To speak truth to power and to poseurs takes courage. To scream with righteous indignation against slights and slanders takes an incredible amount of courage. Never let anyone get away with discounting the accomplishments and achievements of people who use drugs. Never let anyone say that we are callous and uncaring miscreants because we are not. We, the drug using community and its allies, I lost my place, <laughs> uh, and its allies, are loving, caring people. We care for and about each other. Yes, in part because we have been left with no choice by society and a world that finds it perfectly acceptable to treat PWUD with contempt and derision, but also because we are all that we have for each other. It is imperative that we care for each other, fight for each other, and storm the gates of heaven for our people. The PWD community, our community, is one of the few remaining groups that can be disparaged in every hollowed hall around the globe, on the floors of parliaments and legislatures everywhere, as well as the podium of the UN General Assembly. No one is allowed to spew vitriol against Jews, blacks, Asians, Hispanics. The list goes on and on. But hate against PWD is allowed, encouraged, and rewarded. This is unacceptable. We know where it leads, and leads to and to its effects. Who in this hall has not imagined themselves lying face up on a street in Manila with their head encased in tape? Or lying face down from a gunshot wound in a pool of our own blood? These are cowardly acts committed by cowards. Let us not fool ourselves. These heinous crimes against humanity are are committed by cowardly, hateful demagogues. Yes, I speak to you, Duterte. You are a monster who thinks you can slaughter our brothers and sisters with impunity whilst you laugh and brag about it. Your days of judgment will arrive. You will be judged and found guilty of gross human rights abuses in the International Criminal Court. But most importantly, you will be judged by whatever gods there may be. Your heart will tip the scale and the feather of truth shall be jolted from the scales to float to the floor. I say this to all authoritarian, totalitarian, and fascist regimes and governments. We are acutely aware that what these abominations need to survive and thrive are scapegoats. This has been proven again and again throughout history. We will not be your scapegoats and your method of diverting attention from your crimes and misdeeds. We drug users have been around since the first hominid happened upon fermented fruit, or a mushroom, or the, plant of a leaf, or the leaf of a plant, and we will remain on this planet until it is consumed by the sun. You will not win. We shall stand triumphant. Thank you. If I, one more, a little more time up here. A little more time up here. Um, and this is all serious. This, please, people, we are all we have for each other. I know you, many of you are here to party, have fun with friends, and I know around the world the heroin is such crap and not potent. It is very potent here. Do not think we are joking. We do not joke. Purity levels in the U.S. are above 70% in Canada as well, and now fentanyl and carfentanyl. There is evil afoot in the world. Please, when you're partying with people who use opiates, make sure they have naloxone. Make sure you know how to use it. We have intramuscular, we have nasal. People have donated so much to keep all of us safe. As I said, we are all we have for each other. Please, please, be careful, be safe, be wise. Always test your shot. Never use alone. If you need to go into a bathroom for privacy, fine, but the door stays ajar. Do not let anyone, anyone, die during this conference and slander our good name. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lee. Congratulations. I should say Lee has been a tireless peer health worker at the last number of conferences and is always front and center in trying to keep people safe. <laughs>